This video is gonna be a little bit different, kind of different, not too different, but we're gonna be blending psychology, some psychology theories, as well as some science, and all of these things coming together. It's designed to help you think a little bit more and broaden your mind when we're talking about people like Jeffree Star, Trisha Paytas, and Tana Mojo, as well as some more. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community, try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And for everybody who enjoyed my last video about the YouTuber-inspired meditation, I'm surprised how many of you like that. So I'm gonna keep doing them. I'm gonna try to make it a goal to do them at least once a week. Um, but I also uploaded the MP3 up over on Patreon. So if you're a patron, go check it out. You can download it, put it on your phone, listen to it whenever, and I'll be doing more like that, all right? So this video, it might be longer. Here's some warnings. It might be longer. Not sure how long it's gonna be yet. I might seem a little bit manic, all right? Um, it's probably because I'm jacked up on caffeine, but like, one of the goals of this video is, some of you get exactly what I'm doing with this channel, other people don't, but in my opinion, one of the best things you could do for your mental health is just kind of like, question your own thinking. Ask yourself, why do I think the way I think? And if you're a psychology nerd like I am, this is huge, this is important. And there's so many things happening in our daily life and we just don't think about it. So this is gonna be partially a story time, but it's gonna lead into some different topics involving YouTubers and all of that. Like, you guys, your mental health is involved in literally everything that you're doing, whether you realize it or not. So, let's start with the story time. Today, I am at Affiliate Summit here in Las Vegas with my buddies from the band RKVC, awesome dudes. And I'm sitting there and I'm in a talk, right? They have like presenters and they talk on stage. And you know, during some lull time, I was like looking at my phone and I see like every drama channel on earth is talking about Jeffree Star today. I'm like, what the heck did Jeffree Star do? So I DM my girl, Ashley Kyle, go check her out. She has an awesome channel, spilling tea and talking about stuff. Anyways, go check out Ashley Kyle's channel. But I was like, girl, I'm in a talk right now. So like, tell me what's going on with Jeffree Star. I don't know. So she sent me like, you know, what was happening on Twitter. And this is when my wheels start turning. So like, I have been, I've been really thinking about the Gabby Hanna situation lately, right? Like some of you are like, oh my God, you make so many videos on this person or whatever. And it's, it's because I'm naturally curious and it brings up these topics that I just wanna, I just wanna talk about. And a lot of you love that. A lot of you, you know, start thinking about things in a new way or whatever, but Something that I was thinking about. So like Jeffree Star, for those of you who don't know, I'm not gonna get into the whole story. Actually, I'm gonna link Ashley Kyle's video if you guys wanna check it out. But I see Jeffree Star do it and I'm like, why does Jeffree Star always get a free pass? Like Jeffree Star is cool and all, but why does he always get a free pass? Like those of you who saw like the, the drama get in or whatever that they were calling it in 2018, like Manny MUA, lost hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Laura Lee, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, right? But one could argue, right? If you put these things together, these people like, Jeffree Star might've done things worse than them, right? In his past, okay? But Jeffree Star is actually gaining subscribers. And I'm like, why? So I was looking at Jeffree Star's tweets and I'm like, what if Manny MUA tweeted the exact same thing would people just say, oh no, that's Manny? No, people might freak out about it. But I was looking at it and it was just, it was just fascinating to me. So another example I'll give you. So James Charles on Christmas said that all he wanted on Christmas was some D, right? He tweeted that out. People lost their minds. And I'm like, Jeffrey says that like every five seconds, right? So why is this different? But I, I started thinking about it even more because I talk a lot about Tana Mojo, I talk a lot about Trisha Paytas. So like, let's look at this. I made a video about why Tana Mojo is quote unquote worse than Gabby Hanna. Like, Tana Mojo, let's just run through the list real quick, okay? Tana Mojo is gaining followers. She still has loyal subscribers. People aren't going anywhere. They're still buying her merch. This girl filmed a dead body, <laughs> right? This girl was the, the subject of a content cop being pointed out as a hypocrite and a liar and, a, and a, as an exaggerator. 
so many things. I'm probably missing a ton of them, all right? Oh, oh, I, oh, 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 promoting drug use, filming being in a car on drugs and crashing, right? But what's interesting is, is that during the whole Kenza Cosmetics thing, Gabby Hanna got so much flack and Tana didn't. And I'm like, why, right? Always think about the Logan Paul uh, thing in Japan, but Tana Mojo did the same thing and people still don't even know about that. So I'm like sitting there, I'm like thinking, I'm thinking, right? And Trisha Paytas, she has this diehard audience too. So it had me thinking, I'm like, why is this? Why is this? So as I'm leaving the convention today or the conference today, I call up my mom, all right? Some of you have nicknamed her Mama Soul. Those of you who don't know my mom, Dr. Carrie Randazzo, she's a professional psychologist. She has a PhD in psychology. So I'm driving home and I'm trying to explain it to my mom, even though she's not in like all the YouTube stuff yet. I'm just, I, because I know you guys want me to do more things on psychology and I wanted to talk to her and say, are there any studies? I'm like, mom, I'm, uh, this is what's going into my head. Are there any psychological studies that might be able to prove or disprove what I'm saying, right? Like, why do we cut some people some slack and other people not, right? So my mom and I talked, I, I whipped out my notebook and started writing down stuff. So now here's where the video is starting, okay? So the first thing I wanna talk about is Sigmund Freud, right? A lot of you don't know, um, unless you took like psycho psychology classes and things like that, a lot of you don't know many of the famous uh, psychologists in history, but Sigmund Freud is one of the most famous ones. Sigmund Freud changed the game. So one of the things that Sigmund Freud did to change the game was, he brought up the idea of the unconscious mind, right? So there's certain things that we do like on the surface level, right? Our thoughts, our feelings, our actions and everything like that. Well, he was the first one to kind of hypothesize that there's things going on underneath the surface. There's things going on underneath, a lot of them stem from childhood, that can explain why we feel the way we feel, why we do the things that we do, why we react the way that we react, right? And over the last hundred years or so, we know even more so that this is true. This is why I talk to you about things that have happened in your childhood are affecting you as an adult. Those of you who haven't taken the test or know about the test, you should really check out the Adverse Childhood Experiences test, all right? I did a video about it a long time ago where I went through and took the test, right? But Sigmund Freud, he was kind of like the father of that idea that there's things happening underneath the surface and it kind of changed how therapy worked. So when you sit in there like, and you're talking to a therapist, you're kind of bringing things up from the surface. And usually what a therapist is doing is kind of guiding you right? To see if you can come to your own aha moments, or maybe the therapist can point out these aha moments. When I say therapist, this can be a psychologist to anybody in the field. That's kind of what they're designed to do. It's kind of help you get to the root of the problem, right? So this is why I want you guys to think more. This is why I talk about these things on my channel, because I look at human behavior and I'm constantly fascinated by it, right? I want you guys to think like, why? Why am I harder on this person than this person, right? So one of the first things that we're gonna talk about is this little thing called expectancy theory, okay? So expectancy theory was something brought up by this dude, I think his last name was Vroom, which is an interesting last name, right? And expectancy theory. So they started this out with like business, okay? So let me give you an example of expectancy theory. This is the way our mind works, like things that you can expect. You show up to work, you're gonna get a paycheck. You expect that thing. But now we can kind of look at sociology with this, right? We expect things of certain people, all right? So check this out. One thing that I was curious about was what do Jeffree Star, Tana Mojo, and Trisha Paytas all have in common, okay? Jeffree Star, especially since the Shane Dawson series, we now know about his history of self-harm. So by the way, everybody who like freaks out about me talking about these things publicly, I only talk about what's public knowledge, all right? But Jeffrey talked about his issues with depression and self-harm, okay? Then he made a follow-up video, that little uh, video that I pulled up right behind me. That's actually his follow-up where he's talking about more secrets. He talks about things with his mom and everything like that, okay? So Jeffrey Starr talked about his troubled past. Tana Mojo, same thing. Tana Mojo talked about her 
troubled past and her upbringing. Okay, Trisha Paytas. She's made regular videos about dealing with mental illness and her past and her uh, issues with abandonment, her um, past in uh, you know uh, the, the sex worker industry. So many things that she's talked about, okay? So one could say that based on expectancy theory, we expect certain things from these people. And if you think about it, that might be messed up of us, right? We expect somebody who had a certain past to act a certain way, right? So this also makes me question me. I grew up, you know, alcoholic mom, I became an addict, I was a real jerk, I almost died, you know, all sorts of stuff, you know? So then I wonder, I'm like, what do people expect of me? You see what I'm saying? But we also have to look at Jeffrey, Tana, and Trisha today. So you have Jeffree Star. Remember when I was comparing Jeffree Star to James Charles and James Charles sent a tweet on Christmas? Jeffree Star does that all the time. Well, the thing is, we expect that from Jeffree Star. We don't expect that from James Charles. I remember a lot of the talk happening around James Charles was he's supposed to be very brand friendly. He works with a lot of brands. He's supposed to be family friendly. He has a young audience, da 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 da, right? But Jeffree Star, who did the exact same thing more often, all the time, we're thrown off with James Charles does it, but not Jeffree Star, right? Now, let's compare Tana Mojo and Gabby Hanna again. Tana Mojo, we already ran through her list of everything that she's done, but we expect something else from Gabby Hanna because of Gabby Hanna's brand, right? So that's something I want you to think about. Same thing with Trisha Paytas. If somebody else was doing the same things that Trisha Paytas was doing, Will we, will we have a different view or opinion on it? Again, these videos are for you because I want you to start thinking about this. Like, why do you, why do you give people passes in your life on this side, but not on that side? Does that make sense? Next, we're gonna talk about the psychology of confirmation bias, right? So my mom and I were talking about this and this tripped me up even more. So confirmation bias, real quick rundown of what confirmation bias is. We look for things that agree with our beliefs, okay? A great example is flat earthers love finding flat earther videos that agree with their opinion. And I'm sorry if I have any flat earther fans out there. But we are drawn to people that believe the same things that we do. Here's another example of confirmation bias. I used to be guilty of this as well. I, get, I would get a really dumb, stupid idea, right? Like, hey, we should go drink and drive or something like that. And I would ask, 30 people, hey, do you think drinking and driving is a good idea? They'd be like, no, you're an idiot. Then I would talk to one person and they'd be like, you know what, Chris, you're actually a better driver when you're drunk. And I'd be like, you know what, you're right, right? That's my confirmation bias. I was asking all these people a question until I got to the one person that agreed with me. So when you combine expectancy theory with confirmation bias, we expect a certain thing from Jeffree Star or Tana Mojo or Trisha Paytas. They're playing into our confirmation bias, right? So it would be out of, out of character for us if they did something that we didn't expect. But when you switch it over to some of the other YouTubers who have had drama or whatever it is and they get you know massive attention for it, it's because it, it might be playing into our confirmation bias in a different way. Let's go back to using Gabby Hanna as an, uh, as an example. So let's say I'm a person with trust issues and I'm looking at somebody like Gabby Hanna and I'm like, there's no way she's that squeaky clean. Absolutely no way, right? And she's chill, she's chill, she's been doing fine, she's been doing good, right? And then all of a sudden I figure out she worked with Kenza Cosmetics, I'm like, aha! I got her, and now it finally agreed with my confirmation bias, so I get to run around telling everybody I told you so. You see what I mean? But I look at that too, like when I was looking at the whole drama thing last year when everything blew up between Jeffree Star and Manny MUA and Laura Lee and everything like that, I, I could maybe argue, or I just want you to ask yourselves, because I'm not trying to sway your opinion any either way, I just want you to think about this like, were, were people looking at Manny and saying, you know what, I bet he's not that good of a friend. Manny's probably not that good of a friend. I don't trust that guy. Maybe he's the problem, right? And then when it comes out, boom, now, now my beliefs are confirmed. So I blow it up, right? Because you know what feels good based on neuroscience? 
is when your beliefs are confirmed, okay? They've done neurological studies where when your belief is confirmed, it actually sends off neurotransmitters in your brain that make you feel good. That's one of the reasons why we're drawn towards things that confirm different biases that we have. Isn't that crazy? So lastly, the last thing I wanna talk about is something that I've brought up, which is called black and white thinking. Now, this is a common symptom of borderline personality disorder, but I've made a video about how a lot of people struggle with black and white thinking, okay? So black and white thinking is seeing people as either all good or all bad. And this is something else that we struggle with. So let's, let's kind of wrap all these things together, right? So I expect a certain YouTuber, let's say Shane Dawson, I expect him to be a great guy, good guy, whatever, right? but maybe there's something up with him. So he does something bad, I'm like, aha, Shane isn't a good dude. I knew it, I knew he wasn't that good of a guy. Well, since I have black and white thinking, I completely throw away all of the good things Shane's ever done, now he is a bad human being. Shane Dawson is a villain. You see what I mean? So like, when we are playing into our own confirmation bias or maybe our trust issues, we can completely demonize somebody and forget that they're a human being. We forget that this person is not all good or not all bad. Some people are good and they make bad decisions, right? And this is why I just want you guys to think. I just want you guys to do some critical thinking and ask yourself, who am I hanging out with? Who am I drawn to? Which YouTubers do I watch? Why do I watch them? Ask yourself questions. I've been getting into mindfulness and meditation more on this channel. This is why. Because it helps you keep track of your thoughts and get curious and saying, why am I so mad at this influencer for doing this thing, but I'm giving that person a pass? I was talking to my mom too, and screw it, thank God my sister doesn't watch my channel, but <laughs> I grew up and my sister was a screw up. So if any of you haven't seen my mom's channel on your dysfunctional family roles, go check it out. I'm gonna link it up in the info card. But anyways, I was, God, I can't even remember the role name, but anyways, I was the, I was the kid that everybody kind of forgot about, right? Because I could take care of myself. I didn't cause problems, I didn't do anything wrong or anything like that. But my sister, she was a troublemaker. Like she got kicked out of school, she was causing problems. I won't get into too many details. Love my sister today, we get along well. But back then, like I was asking my mom, when my mom was explaining to me these uh, psychological theories to me, I was like, okay, so was it kind of like, when Nicole did something bad, you guys expected it of her, right? Like you expected that from her. But me, since I was like a good kid growing up and you know got good grades and never caused problems at school or didn't give you guys any issues, like it, when I did something bad, it threw you off guard and you were harder with me because that's something that you didn't expect from me. And my mom's like, exactly, all right? So even though I'm using YouTubers as an example for you guys, this stuff is happening throughout all of your life, every single day, and I just want you to check in with yourself and ask yourself why. Just stop yourself during the day when you find yourself getting angry or happy. Like, have you ever asked yourself why you get happy when somebody fails? Have you ever just stopped? That's a pretty crazy question, right, Tristan? Like, have you ever stopped to ask yourself why you get happy when someone fails? Like, that's a messed up thing when you really think about it. But I know some of you are sick and twisted. But anyways, that's what we're working on here, all right? So like, I know this video was different and I just wanted to share this with you, but there's so much psychology that plays into everything and I'm trying to blend it in more. But I also wanted to share with you like how my brain works. Like, what I'm doing, like when I'm not making a video, I'm watching videos, I'm watching what's happening on social media, I'm just monitoring human behavior and I'm like, why is this this way and why is this this way, right? Maybe that's why I love like, you know, behavior, uh, uh, behavioral psychology and like sociology and psychology and all the, all the ologies, right? Not all the ologies, I'm not a huge biology fan. Anyways, now I'm rambling. But anyways, let me know what you took from this video, okay? Do you, ex do, you, do you expect things from certain people? Do you hold certain people to a higher standard? Maybe because they are a little bit more squeaky clean? Or do you expect less from people who have kind of a, a messed up past, right? Do you struggle with black and white thinking? Is that something that you struggle with? And what's that third thing that we talked about? Confirmation bias. Do you struggle with confirmation bias and trust issues? All right, let's have a conversation down below. And if you like this video, let me know. 
give it a thumbs up, all right? But if you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I'm making a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And there is brand new stuff up over on Patreon, excluding meditations. If you'd like to become a patron, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.